Hi, everybody. Coming to you at uh, 430 on this Monday afternoon, and I thought I would start off with a factoid. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill coming to you from my home up in uh, Vancouver, Washington, the Portland metro area and expanding uh, coverage across the Northwest. The factoid is the following, and a lot of you have been asking about this. When's the final freeze? The last time that PDX, Portland's airport, got down to 32 degrees or colder was on March 8th. So it's been a couple of weeks since PDX has dropped down to freezing. And it's getting to be that time of the year where the number of freezing nights is quickly going to become few in either possibility or reality. Now, NOAA put this graphic on their website, and I grabbed a, a screen uh, image of it. Basically, this color codes final freezing temperatures on average during the spring for the entire country. And if you jump up into Western Oregon and Western Washington, you can see the white to light green colors that dominate. So that's an, an average, an average final frost or freeze each spring, anywhere from as early as mid-March, which we have already passed, through about mid-April. And in fact, for Portland, the final freeze average year is April 1st. Now, there can be spots caution in the Willamette Valley and even spots up in Clark and Cowlitz counties where sometimes we have spotty freezing temperatures as late as May 1st. But on average... On average, somewhere between really, let's say April 1 and April 15th is when we see the finale up and down the I-5 corridor. So we're getting close to that. Now, a couple of more things I want to show you. Oh, come on. Come on. I hate it when it does this. My graphic. Uh, there he is. Okay. Sorry. Having some uh, user issues. <laughs> I showed you this graphic, um, I think, the last time we talked. This is the 30-day outlook, which takes us through... April 24th, according to the European model, the upper level, upper level flow. And it shows ridging up to our Northwest, which would tend to weaken fronts as they come in. It shows the most active flow of heavier rain systems down in Southern California. And if you look at all of this, it would basically produce anywhere from normal to plus one to plus two degrees above normal temperatures as we go through a good chunk of April. And in addition, what I really wanted to show you, since we're talking about freezing temperatures, when I looked at day-to-day -day weather flows and patterns through the 24th day of April, I only see anywhere from one to at most three nights in the Willamette Valley that would maybe flirt with freezing. So again, it looks like we're starting to wind down freezing possibilities. I always urge people to at least wait until we get past April 1st. And of course, that's coming up this Monday, so we'll see. All right, another graphic that I showed you yesterday is this upper level low, which is still on track to bring us a steady shot of rain developing after midnight, Tuesday night, tomorrow night, into Wednesday morning. This will by far be the strongest, wettest system that we have upcoming this entire week. And these are the headlines with that stronger system coming Tuesday overnight into Wednesday morning. Steady morning rain on Wednesday. The front right now comes into Portland around noon or one in the afternoon. Behind that front, we break into scattered showers. So steady rain breaks into showers. Gusty southwest winds ahead and along the front Wednesday morning along the coast to about 40 miles per hour, and maybe some 50 to 30 mile per hour gust in the morning into early afternoon as the front passes uh, here in the I-5 corridor. Rain totals from Tuesday night through Wednesday, about an inch at the beach and averaging about a half of an inch in Portland. Snow levels will jump to about 4,500 feet as the front approaches the Cascades Wednesday afternoon. Then later in the day, in the Wednesday night, dive down to 3,000 feet. And this really should be a good snowmaker for the Cascades Wednesday evening overnight into Thursday morning. Mount Hood Resorts picking up as much as eight inches of snow certainly at 5,000 feet and higher at Meadows and Timberline, and maybe some decent snow at past level, covering up those roads on um, Thursday morning as well. So lots going on as we get into the stronger weather front coming in Tuesday night into Wednesday. This is the uh, what they call the infrared satellite picture with true color daytime spectrum added to it. It kind of looks like it's an infrared satellite picture that's color-coded, to look almost like a visible picture. So I think that's pretty cool, I like it. So here we are right now today. We've had showers pushing in this afternoon. This is a cooler pool of air with scattered showers continuing to feed into us, but the moisture, once we get into this evening, starts to thin out. So showers overnight will become fewer in number and fewer in number on Tuesday. 
Now, right here is a warm surge of deeper cloud cover that will quickly come in Tuesday evening after midnight, develop rain. Here's the front that will come into Portland around 1 a.m., or excuse me, 1 in the afternoon. That's 1 p.m. Wednesday. Here are scattered heavy showers, maybe some hail and even a rumble of thunder Thursday to follow. And then after that, the weather systems hold off and we build into a really, really nice sunny weekend. All, all weather models are now showing. So here's the radar right now. It's 436 in the afternoon on this Monday. Still pretty active, plenty of showers all the way off the coast and still feeding inland from the Pacific. So um, again, I think once we get into the evening hours or certainly after the, certainly after the sun goes down, we'll start to see the showers become fewer number. But for right now, the radar is actually lit up and it's pretty active. No storminess, just some rain and where you see the yellow, some embedded heavier showers coming in with these systems. Here's the way the uh, national blended model from the National Weather Service shows it. This is the future radar product. So it's similar. I was playing golf with my buddy the other day, yesterday, and Sean said, hey, according to my, my phone app, it's going to stop raining at 10 in the morning. What he's looking at is a future coded radar product, which can be really active in the short term, out two or three hours. So that's what this is looking at. This is five o'clock this afternoon, still really wet where you see the green. But starting to dry at the coast, and then as we go into the evening, here we are at late this evening, 9, 10 p.m., showers mostly on the west side, excuse me, east side, banking up into the Cascades, but not that many showers back to the west. Let's take this into Wednesday morning early, a few scattered showers, not much. This is into Wednesday afternoon at 5 p.m., a few scattered showers, mostly hitting up against the Cascades, but otherwise pretty quiet. So tomorrow... A brighter day, the cloud cover thins, a few scattered showers, but not nearly as wet. And all that will allow for some warming temperatures too. Now, this only goes into, this would be about midnight Tuesday overnight. So here we are, midnight or 1 a.m. Wednesday morning. So this shows the rain picking up late overnight. And all of this will be the steady rain that comes in up and down the I-5 corridor Wednesday morning. So Wednesday morning, absolutely. In terms of hours of steady widespread rain, the wet bullseye of this um, entire week upcoming. Here's the way it looked. This is courtesy of KGW's Futurecast model, Wednesday at 7 a.m. Widespread steady rain, some heavier rain pockets embedded. The snow level eventually is about goes up to 4,500 feet. That would be a wet mix or rain at government camp. And then changing the snow behind that front later in the day on Wednesday itself. I do want to talk about wind a little bit. Here's the American GFS model. And this shows you the streamline. See the little arrow right there, the barb? So this is wind coming up from the southwest. This shows you sustained wind speeds. So as that front starts to approach, here we are. Well, let me let me just back this up again. All right, here's, here's Wednesday early morning. This is Wednesday at 5 a.m. This shows just offshore, straight up from the south, 35 mile per hour winds just offshore from the coast. So it stands to reason there could be some 40 mile per hour winds of the coast Wednesday morning, all right? Then the front comes inland. Here we are now the front. This is right when the front is passing uh, the Willamette Valley. And you can see the winds coming up from the south, southwest. This shows 10, 12, maybe 15 mile per hour sustained winds, some breezes to maybe 20, 25 in terms of gusts. So that's not a lot, but it's noticeable. And then now we're into the evening hours. The front is passed. The wind direction is still southwest, still breezy. Afternoon and evening at the coast with sustained winds easily gusting to 30 or better. Winds in the valley, more like 10 to 20 mile per hour with eight mile per hour sustained winds. That'd be maybe some gusts as high as 20 at most. And then as we go into Thursday, I think we, well, it's still fetching a south wind flow Thursday morning. Um, and that's with those scattered showers behind that front. That shows you that the air doesn't get that cold in the valley behind the frontal passage because it's still a south wind flow. I do believe that up high, the snow levels will fall to 3,000 or at least below 4,000 feet during the day on Thursday. Uh, one more uh, courtesy of KGW-TV, Futurecast model to show you. This is total snow up and down the Cascades ending Thursday morning. So they'll get a little bit tonight and tomorrow, but this is mostly showing you what accumulates Wednesday evening, overnight, and early Thursday morning. And it shows 8, 9, 10 inches of snow up on Mount Hood. That would be at 5,000 feet with some decent snow, potentially, you know, maybe four inches or five inches at pass level. 
shows 18 inches in the snowpack up in Washington around Rainier, seven to eight inches down in Hoodoo, and some five to six inch snow amounts uh, down out east getting into the Blue Mountains and down into Baker County. So this would be the biggest snowmaker we've seen for the Mount Hood Resorts in quite some time, in quite some time. So that, that would be great news. Okay, quick word about the upper level pattern. This is uh, the American GFS model. This is the upper level low Wednesday morning. This is the front coming into the coast Wednesday morning, the upper level low lags. And this comes in, the upper level low comes into our area. Here it is Thursday afternoon at 4 p.m. Doesn't fully come in, but the cold trough settles. There's the polar jet, uh, deep blue contour. So that's the falling snow levels just getting into the Mount Hood level around 4,000 or maybe as low as 3,000 feet. The likely showers continue Thursday overnight, likely showers into Friday morning. Then during the day Friday, see how the low, this is Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. See how the low drops to our south? As that low drops to our south, the number of showers Friday will start to decrease. And we could open up partly cloudy skies. And here's that big warm weekend out here, the strong ridging. Watch this ridging come in. This is Saturday afternoon. This is Sunday afternoon. This is Easter Sunday. This ridge is deep, thick enough, or excuse me, uh, strong enough in terms of the ridging pinnacle right in here that it blocks our weather system. So we ought to have uh, sunshine on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, maybe even into Tuesday. And I'm going to play this into Tuesday. The European model likes a chance of showers Tuesday afternoon. This is Tuesday at 5 p.m. Here's the ridge. See how it's kind of weakening? Here's the axis now is to our east. So it's possible there could be some afternoon moisture come in Tuesday. That would be our earliest shower chance after a nice Saturday, a nice Sunday, and a nice Monday. All right, real quick look at some forecast numbers. I grab my forecast sheets here. Uh, these are current numbers at 443, or excuse me, 430 this afternoon. Uh, spring break at the coast. Eh, you know, not a lot of sun the next several days. In fact, rain is in the forecast through Saturday. Notice the Weather Service uses the term windy. That's Wednesday with that front coming in in the morning and still windy with the scattered heavy showers on Thursday. I don't believe this is true. I think the coast is dry Saturday. There's no rain chance on Sunday. There's no rain chance on Monday, okay? Uh, I would feel pretty good about the coast being absolutely dry during that time frame. If you're going up to Seattle, have some fun up in the big city. Again, the shower chances through Friday, there's the nice weekend. Seattle, 60 degrees on Sunday. It still ought to be dry, 63 on Monday. Let's go down to Medford. Well, I know several of you watch from down in that area. This is shower chances again through Friday. Now that low drops to the south, so maybe there's a shower chance in Southern Oregon Saturday, but I don't think on Sunday, and this shows about 60 degrees or close to it on Sunday and on Monday with some sunshine down in that area. Uh, the Ducks, um, the men lost in the NCAA basketball tournament in the second round. That was too bad to see. But here is the Eugene forecast. Rain chances into Friday. Lingering Saturday? I don't think so. I, I, I just, I even, I don't get these rain chances on Sunday, Monday. I feel pretty confident that our forecast is going to go mostly sunny and dry on Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Again, we'll, we'll keep an eye on things. And then real quick over in Central Oregon. Sunshine tomorrow, 50 degrees. It was dry and partly cloudy over there today in Bend. Shower chances on Wednesday and a Thursday and Friday. And then improving conditions over the weekend. Sunday, sunny, 56. Monday, 62. And here's my Portland seven-day. And I really feel pretty confident about the way this is going to play out. So tomorrow's a drier day than we've seen, but still a few showers. The wet Wednesday. The heavy scattered showers on Thursday. Potential stormy skies at times. It was Mahale, maybe a rumble of thunder. The Friday that shows decreasing showers is that low drops to the south that keeps rain chances going down in Medford, for example. And then all dry on Saturday, all dry on Sunday, all dry on Monday of temperatures well up into the 60s. All right. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button. That helps me out. Tell your friends, my weather site's portlandweather.com. I'm Rod Hill, and I'll talk to you soon.